Hello, I'm Jinja Pan. You're welcome to uh, find my background from Google. Just type my name in Jinja Pan. Type my name in the Google and you'll find uh, all my background. Today I'm going to uh, explain the idea of stress analysis. Stress analysis. Uh, what, is it, what's it, what is it for? Why do we need to do stress analysis? Uh, I'm in England. Um, we are in a still in a lockdown, so I can't go go to my office. So I don't have any sophisticated you know equipment to to show you. So what I found from my kitchen um, in this uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, step step stool, and I I haven't paid much too much attention on this step stool, but when I look at it today, I realize that there is actually a, a, a lot of uh, clever ideas went into this uh, the design of this. So if you if you look at this, stool, so you see this uh, <coughs> this curved shape here, yeah, of these legs. If you look inside, yeah, and then this curve, right, and also you see these webs, these webs in there, right, and 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 you see that all of that. So they are not there by accident, and they, they are all there to serve a particular function. <clears throat> and we know how these uh, step chairs are made, and they are made by injection molding. So basically, uh, you soften plastics, and it's almost to a point of melting, while well, they don't melt because it's plastic and then you squeeze them into a metallic mold and to make a shape like this. So it's a very efficient process. The problem with that process is that uh, <clears throat> you need to make a mold before you, know, you can make thousands of thousands of these step stools. Um, so imagine you are an engineer and you want to design this thing. And you need to, well, when design, you need to do a CAD drawing, you draw this, and then you need to make decisions. If you are the engineer, you need to make this about, say, the thickness of this plastic uh, stool. And you need, you need to make the decision about the dimension of everything. So I, you have to describe every detail of uh, this simple plastic step stool. There is a lot of variables there. How can you make that decision? Now, it's, it's not uh, an insignificant decision because the last thing you want when you are using this stool, I mean, I use it in my kitchen, I stand it on it to reach uh, dishes. What I don't want to do is that I step on it and it collapses, it falls apart. And that will be an accident and it can be really dangerous even for this simple plastic stool. So it has to be strong enough. Now, how on earth? And when you, you imagine you are doing a CAD drawing, and how about us? You can make sure that your design, you know, as I said, there are so many things you have to choose thickness and, and so on, and, and dimensions and, and, and the, the curvature and the radius and, and all these variables and webs. How many webs you're going to put there? How, how thick they should be? How the depth of these webs? There's so many things you have to choose. So, how can you make sure that? the stool you design is going to be safe. Now you can say, okay, that's easy. I'll just make one. And then I do try and error. I, I, I make one, I get somebody to stand on it and say whether it's going to be okay. Well, that's not going to be that easy because remember, this is made by injection molding. Before you make this, then what you have to do is you have to machine the mold. And that's a very expensive process. So every time you change your design, you have to make a new mold, right? And that's, you know, you can't do that by try and error because it's going to be very expensive. The other thing you might think of is, uh, might be thinking of, okay, that's easy. Let, let, let me make it over design. It. Let's make it chunky and, and thick. You do see a lot of that. Yeah. When you, yeah, I'm sure you go to supermarket you want to buy this. Some of these plastic chairs, they are over designed. They're very chunky. The problem with that is you waste a lot of materials. You know, when you are a, a manufacturer and you're running a business, 
you don't want to waste material. You want to you want this chair is designed just strong enough. You don't want, want to waste the plastic. So you want to be economical. So you, you know, the consumer in the end will benefit from that as well. So you have a balance between the safety of this stool, step stool, and the amount of material you're going to use. Right? So you can't always over design. So I'm just using this simple stool and slap stool as an example. Now imagine there are thousands of thousands of engineering problems like this. Think of a jet engine, think of a car, think of a brake, think of a building. The same issue always come up again and again. You cannot do your design, design a bridge, design a car, design a jet engine, design an airplane by trying and, and crash landing and that's not going to work. And that's not what the engineers do these days. So the, the nice thing about uh, one of the major advantages of the progress of engineering science is that now we are able to do this kind of design and without try and error. And in this simple case of plastic step stool, I can absolutely guarantee you that you don't need to do try and error experiment at all. Yeah. So that's the job. Doing that design, how to do that is the job of stress analysis. So let's, let me explain how this is done at the top level. Of course, there is a lot of details you need to learn. Let me explain at the top level the logic of how this can be done, you know, designing something result try and error. So there can be a lot of examples. I so, so I, I didn't draw a stool, I just draw an arbitrary object there. So let's imagine this is something you, you want to design and there is a force applied on it and I just draw a hole there. So I just dig a hole there. Just say this is an arbitrary system and then support it somewhere. And you want to make sure this structure is strong enough and is going to collapse. So what I've said, it's not possible to do that always by trying error. So to make one and then try it and then it doesn't work and then try again. So what you do is, one thing you can do is you can cut a small piece of this material, yeah? whatever it is, maybe a piece of steel, aluminum, wood, plastic, whatever. You get a small piece of material and then you take it out and you do this, what we call in the laboratory, you can do a tensile test. Yeah, that's not very difficult. Get a piece of material, you apply a force, you design a machine, you do a tensile test. What you get from there is a relationship between the stress you apply and the strain of this material. So you get a stress and a strain relationship. And that looks like this. So you, you know, the stress goes higher. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before. This is really simple. I just want to then put this whole thing in a in, in together in the big picture. So now you do you get this stress strain curve, stress strain relationship, linear goes up and then starts some kind of yielding. This behavior depends on the material. If it's aluminium is one one type of curve, if it's steel is another type of curve, if it's a plastic it's a different type of curve. So but is but I just use this as example so you have that. Now there are some key information you can get from this. One thing we all know is you can get Young's modulus from that. The gradient of this is what we call Young's modulus. Yeah, you can get Young's modulus E out of this test. The other thing which is really important is you get this, what we call the so-called strength of the material. And that's arbitrary because you can pick the strength here. And what I pick is you know, the elastic range. Yeah, just pick a strength. So that is, let's say this is a maximum, this is the stress you worry about, yeah, if, if the stress is higher than this, then the material deform sort of in a, in, a, in a plastic way, you wouldn't like that to do. So you want to design your, your structure which makes sure that the stress is in that range, right? So that is the information you have. This is one information, so that's Young's modulus, and then stress of the strengths of the material, two information you can get from this simple test. And we can do that for any material. It's, very, it's something relatively easy to do. The other thing you can do is we do is we do something called a finite element analysis. So what we do is we, we, we pull up pull a computer software, we divide this 
uh, something you are structure you are designing into millions of millions of small elements and so we set up a mathematical model yeah so this is a finite element model so we set up a finite element model for the structure we run the software you click the button and then what you have is any point of this structure now you get a set of stress so let's just say if we focus on one point any particular point and I take that point in yeah take that point out and I, I enlarge that small element and I got stresses yeah I got stresses in all directions yeah you can understand in this real engineering situation you don't have stress just in one direction you might have stress in all other directions it's just like now let's look at this to the stool again so imagine if you are standing on this yeah if you're standing on this and you think of this piece of material here of course it's pushed in that way but you would also have stress yeah put in both directions so this piece of material is pressed but it's also under stress from both directions but if I now twist it yeah if I twist it I might do that when I'm standing on it yeah I'm not very stable so I said if I twist it I can also generate shear stress yeah so the material is also shear so that's represented here so I can have stresses any point I look I have stresses in one direction in the, in the vertical direction has stresses in the horizontal direction and I have the shear stresses so after I've done my stress analysis using the final element method so I move from here to here and I get this sort of stresses and these are numbers so let me just take a, a, a arbitrary example let's say this this stress value is 400 megapascal I'm, I'm making this up right just make it a number there and let's say this is I don't know this is this is 250 and this is 170 and this is 10 yeah I'm just plugging some arbitrary numbers I run this analysis I got a set of stress values yeah this computer software gave me this arbitrary set of values so the question now you have to answer is this I know that the material you know the material the stress of the material is 400 megapascal the stress you get from this analysis I mean look at one point you look at every other point but let's say look at that one point and that one point I have this set of stress yeah the material is stretched in this direction with a value of 250 megapascal in the horizontal direction with 170 megapascal and with a shear stress of, let's say 10 megapascal the judgment you have to make now is is this safe how do I compare this set of stresses with that value and that is the area what we call failure criteria so that is this let me write you here failure criteria so you need a failure criteria to make that judgment and what you do is in practice you lump this set of stresses into a single effective stress yeah you lump this together into a single effective stress and make sure that that effective stress if that effective stress is less than this value here then you'll be safe if it's larger than that the material will break from the, that system and you can do that for all the points to ensure your design is safe so you can see there's a lot of stuff here on this side I take a piece of material yeah to do this yeah, I take a piece of material I do a tensile test I measure the material property and this is what you do by experiment yeah so this is you, you've done this by experiment on this side you set up a finite element model and this is by computer and then you need to make this judgment you have to do that computer doesn't know how how to do this because this effective stress depends on what material dealing with what temperature you're dealing with is this false dynamic yeah it, it varies 
So this is your human judgment. This is a judgment for engineer to do. So that is what stress analysis is all about, right? It involves this different element. You do experiment, you do computational model, you make a judgment. And pull this all together, you do, you can design that. Yeah. You follow this logic and you design the steps to result a single try and error experiment. Because yeah. this is the data you need. You do that experiment on, on the plastic and then you have that. Sometimes the manufacturer tell you this, this data, the supplier, or the people who sell the, the, the plastic to you, they tell you what are the Young's modulus and the strength. So you don't even need to do that experiment. Once you have that, you have a computer model of this step stool, yeah? And then you run this analysis, you get the stresses, and you get the effective stress, and you lump that together, you compare with the, the strength of this plastic, and then if, if this is satisfied, you're okay. So you can play your design, you can change anything you like, you change your curvature, shape, thickness, diameter, whatever, yeah? You change your design variables, you change your model, you change your CAD model, you run the FE model, and then you do this. And then if the design is safe, and for, I can guarantee you, for the simple plastic step stool, you don't need to do a single try and error. If this process tells you the design is safe, you will be safe. Now, unfortunately, in, in uh, more sophisticated engineering systems, let's say you are designing a jet engine, uh, or a car, and uh, this process is also powerful. You know, engineers follow this process. You do this, but you also have to do experiment. Yeah, either partly or for the complete system. Yeah, you you have to you have to do that because there is also there is always some uncertainty. Maybe things you haven't thought about. Yeah, so experiment. You cannot get rid of experiment test completely, but you still need this, and this will save you an awful lot of trial and error experiment in a normal case.